So these are some new PCB designs I sent off to JLC PCB to be manufactured last week. They've shown up today. And as a full disclosure, JLC have actually foot the bill for these boards. In return, I'm giving them some nice photos and mentioning them now in this video. So if you have any prototype PCB needs, check out the capabilities and competitive prices. Today I'll be assembling the smaller board. I'll talk about the larger board in a different video, but for now it's essentially an FPGA development board that accepts these plugin modules. The smaller board is the first plugin module I've designed, and there's a few more on their way. The plugin module follows the Syzygy specification for FPGA interconnects, and by their terminology from now on we'll, we'll call it a pod because that's what they call it in all their specifications. This particular pod is the 10-inch LCD LVDS pod. As the name implies, it's designed to connect a 10-inch LVDS capable screen to the FPGA. The board is actually a pretty straightforward design. There's a Syzygy pod connector on the back side and on the top side there's some miscellaneous power management stuff to handle all the various LCD voltages, uh, including the backlight. There's also a microchip ATtiny44 on this pod and that handles all of the smarts required behind the Syzygy smart VCCIO features. So I've got a big box from DigiKey with all the parts, so let's assemble some boards. The first step, once you've acquired all the parts in your bill of materials and got the PCBs and stencils, is to apply the solder paste. Because this board has components on both sides, I'll need to repeat this process twice. You can probably do any side first, but since one side only has a connector, that's the side I'm going to do first because it's, it's more simple to, to assemble. So I asked for the stencil to be this size. You can get them larger or smaller, but if the stencil is too small, sometimes it's difficult to secure down to ensure there's no skew or shift while you're applying the paste. And if it's too big, then you need a lot of work area and spare PCBs to secure the stencil. For those unfamiliar with the reflow soldering process, this stencil has laser cut apertures above every pad on the PCB that we want a component soldered down. By using solder in a paste form, we can apply solder selectively to these areas by squeegeeing the paste through the stencil. We can then place the parts on top of this solder paste, and finally the board can be placed through an oven that brings everything up to temperature to melt the solder and join the parts to the board. The solder paste, as the name suggests, is just a solder in a paste form. It's simply made from a slurry of tiny solder bowls and flux and you can get many types and different blends. I found good results from a variant from MG Chemicals. It's MG Chemicals 4900P. In particular, this solder paste is a SAC305 blend, which defines what alloys it contains. So it's mostly tin, 3% silver, and 0.5% copper. Why I would want or need any different alloys uh, is beyond my scope of knowledge. But needless to say, you can use any solder paste you wish, leaded or lead-free. My only advice would be use uh, something name-branded. So DigiKey has a fine selection you can choose from. And also follow the manufacturer's recommendations on storage temperature and shelf life for best results. In order to get a good solder paste application, the stencil needs to sit perfectly flat on top of the PCB. To achieve this, we need a flat surface that extends out to the edges of the stencil so that it doesn't bowl and lift up from the surface of the PCB. I have this old box of scrap PCBs that I use for this exact purpose. With the stencil secured, we can apply solder paste. I use a putty filling blade that I bought from a local hardware store. I find applying even pressure and a constant angle to the squeegee gives good results. And moving slowly gives the paste time to flow into the stencil. With the paste applied, we can now remove the, the metal stencil from the top of the PCB. 
you have to be careful not to shift the stencil while it's still in contact with the paste that's on the circuit board. With the squeegee complete, we can move on to the inspection to check that, check that we have a good coverage over all the pads. The things to note uh, while you're checking here is looking for, for shorts and an even coating of solder paste on the pads of interest. You can see the jumpers on the bottom of the board didn't have openings on the stencil, so we're only interested in this one connector. It's clearer under the microscope view, but here you can almost see the individual bowls of solder that make up the paste. This is the connector for the Syzygy pod that we're going to be placing onto the board. Because this connector has locating pins, it's quite easy just to hand place and then apply a bit of downward force to ensure the pins are making contact with the solder paste. This helps during reflow to give a nice fillet to the solder. So we just got to set up the reflow oven here. I'm using a second-hand retrofitted toaster oven. The modifications I've done to this, this oven are to include a full-sized conventional oven's heating element inside the space of the toaster oven. So it really gives it the power to ramp up temperature within the allocated reflow time. And here I've just skipped through the skipped through ahead to save you watching six minutes of, of getting up to temperature. And uh, that's all there is to it. Once it's reflowed, you can take it out. Uh, not straight away, let it cool down first. But once it's out, just a uh, quick inspection to make sure all the solder looks, uh, looks good and then you can move on to the top layer. So the top layer is gonna be stenciled much the same as the backside was, using more spare circuit boards as before. But now we have to lift up the board to clear that connector that's on the bottom because we still want a nice flat surface for the stencil to sit on top of. So here I'm just using more scrap circuit boards to, to lift a, a plane that the stencil is going to sit on top of. I'm using double-sided tape to stick all these circuit boards together to make a nice, you know, semi-rigid, semi-permanent setup for this one prototype. The camera was in the way here, so I actually moved it and changed the lighting a little bit to, to align the stencil. And so here I'm taping down both sides of the stencil. And you can see I've got good alignment over the, the pads. And just like before, I'll take a, a squeegee and then apply a constant even pressure across to squeeze that solder paste through the stencil. For this application, I changed the angle down towards the stencil slightly and then lift it up a little bit too early before I got to the other edge of the board. So you can see there's a few areas that don't have solder paste on them. So what I've done is I've, before I've moved the stencil, I've lifted up the squeegee and reapplied over those at a shallower angle to hopefully push some more solder paste in. You do have to be a little bit careful in reapplying solder paste like this because if the stencil shifts slightly, you can get some misalignment and more solder paste can get stuck under the stencil instead of just through the apertures. After removing the stencil, I'll take a look at it under the microscope to ensure there's no shorts between pads. This board is relatively simple in terms of the geometry on the board. 
which means it's fairly forgiving with solder paste application. So the main things I'm looking for short wise are just on this QFM package in the top corner here and then on the FPC connector itself. And you can see the alignment is, is pretty good. It's not perfect, but as so long as the solder paste doesn't overlap over two pads over the solder mask, you should be, should be good. So I, I've been using this plugin for KiCad called Interactive HTML Bomb, which uh, it's a button that adds into KiCad when you press it, it creates a HTML file based off your board design, which is shown in the bottom left corner of the screen here. And you have this open on a computer while you're placing the board. And uh, pressing the N key will tick the little checkbox to say you've placed the component and move on to the next component and highlight it on the little preview there. So this isn't my plugin, but it's open source. And so just yesterday I added a feature for the progress bar that you see on the preview there. Because um, I really like to see the, the progress as I'm placing the board to see how many parts I've got left to do. And so once all the parts are placed, I just go around to make sure they're, they're all in a nice contact with the, the solder paste by just lightly tapping on top of them, pushing them down. If you, if you don't do this, you can get uh, tombstoning occurring where a part will solder on one side and not the other, and it will lift up. With all the parts placed, it's time to put this side of the board into the reflow oven. Now because we've got the connector on the back, I've just stacked up the other side of the circuit board with some, some blank PCBs underneath. As before, I've skipped forward in the reflow here, so you'll just see just when the solder starts to melt. And with this second side reflow, the board is now complete. So hopefully you've enjoyed that uh, that follow along. And I'll do an, I've got footage of the larger FPGA board, and I'll be doing a video of that. So look out for that. And um, any questions or comments, um, comment section is down below. Have a good day.